Hello, I'm Alistair Newton, and I'm speaking today with Brian E. Lavery, who is the playwright of Stockholm. Um, so can you just speak a little bit about uh, what this piece is about? It's about a seemingly perfect couple who um, have a lovely house, and um, it's his birthday, and um, they're going to have a lovely day. Or are they? Look. I can't look. It's spring. I'm still in the film. They're coming back from seeing a film. When? Listen. I can only hear Swedish. Oh, I love that film. Love it, love it, love it, love it. To death, love it. A matinee, they love going to see films together in the afternoon. Particularly when it's someone's birthday. Particularly then, as part of a spectacularly put together birthday day. Afternoon, film. No dick flicks, no chick flicks allowed. Class. Der Seligen Selly. Subtitles. The Seventh Seal. I love Igmar Bergman. And for people who aren't familiar with the Stockholm Syndrome, can you speak a little bit about that? Um, it's a condition which was first, which was named because it, it's when a cat, when there's a hostage situation, um, the hostage can often fall in love with the hostage taker um, in quite a, a damaging way. And so it, it's taken from that and that it's Stockholm because it first happened in a bank in Stockholm where the, some people were taken hostage and when they were released they tried to plea, to make plead that their hostage takers should be forgiven. Um, so that extremely inarticulately is what <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome is. And, and you've used this as a metaphor for sort of the, the breakdown of, a, or, the, or the issues of a contemporary relationship, yeah? Yeah. Um, it's, yes, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's about a couple who, well, anybody who sees the play will see that it is implicit in there and, and we investigate whether it's a good thing or a bad thing to be so involved with each other. Um, and I wonder if you can speak a little bit about the, the development of the piece, because I understand that uh, when you originally created it, you sort of observed uh, two actors and two dancers um, sort of improvising and, and working on this material, and then you actually sort of constructed the text around that, that yeah. work? Um, I made it with a company called Frantic Assembly, who are known in England and, and wherever they go as um, two directors who work together and they, they always um, they commission a text and then they, they make it all about movement as well. What I realised was that each time I wrote something that had been covered by the movement that they developed so right. I just I just sat on my notebook and, and just watched them make the story in front of my eyes. Yeah, did, did you find it an interesting challenge then, having to try to marry the movement to the text? Um, I didn't try too hard. I mean, I, it wasn't so much a challenge, it was sort of a wonderful revelation, is that um, I just noticed that how I didn't notice, I, I kind of remembered that whenever I've, I've been in rehearsal, how much actors love, absolutely love, playing around with their bodies and they learn everything and they express through their bodies. And that very often, the only thing you see at the end of, of, of that time on stage are they walk into a room and then they walk out right. or, you know, they might kiss. but. They were, it just seemed to me that I had been using like 5% of, of actors' abilities with their body. So it was, it was a joy to me. All right, well, thank you very much for speaking with me. And Stockholm uh, runs until June 3rd at the Tarragon Extra Space. Thank you.